Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to get data for all the symbols of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 1000, whatever you want um, with Yahoo Finance in a very, very simple way. Um, it only really works for daily data if you want a lot of history. Um, I can also make a video of how to do this with um, more granular data with um, interactive brokers, but for now let's use Yahoo Finance because uh, it's very simple. So the first thing you need is you need the actual symbols because we're going to be using this uh, pandas thing uh, called pd.readhtml um, which will go through an, a website and take out all the tables um, and so like as long as you have one table with the symbols uh, or the tickers you need then you can extract the tickers. So let me show you an example. So you go to Wikipedia and you say um, Let's Google it. Let's do Wikipedia um, S and P 500. Uh, sorry, um, let's do uh, Wikipedia Nasdaq 100. Okay, so um, Nasdaq 100, as you see, the first table does not have symbols. Second table, no symbols. Third table, no symbols. But this table does have symbols. It has ticker. Okay, so you go like this. Nasdaq 100. You uh, you you go like this, and you'll see you'll get a list of uh, tables. So you have to check them one at a time. This is the table. No symbols, no symbols, no symbols, symbols, right? So I'll call this table. Oh no, doesn't have symbols yet. Here, ticker, symbols. So I'll, I'll call this NASDAQ 100 symbols and then I'll do dot ticker. Uh, you know, let's, let's separate this into two. We'll do NASDAQ 100 um, because uh, maybe you'd want to get the industry for whatever you're doing. And then I'll do another one that's NASDAQ 100 symbols. And then I'll do NASDAQ 100 dot ticker acre dot to list. Sorry, um, there's construction outside. Okay, so this is um, NASDAQ 100 symbols. Okay, so now let's get the S&P 500. A S and P 500 symbols. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to look at S and P 500. I already know ahead of time this is not going to work because there is no table that has uh, the list of um, components. So as you see here, S and P 500, no list of components. So you have to find a thing with a list of components. So you do uh, uh, components, I think. Um, you have to check, like sometimes components work, sometimes um, uh, the actual index itself works. This components thing seems to work. It has the symbol at first. So you can do like this, uh, SP500 equals PD, the data frame, um, uh, PD dot uh, read HTML. Sorry, HTML. Uh, and then SP five hundred. Let's see which one it, it corresponds to. Oh, it's the first table. Nice. So now uh, let's do SP five hundred and the, the the symbol. It's called symbol here, not ticker. So SP five hundred symbols uh, equals uh, SP five hundred dot sim. Uh, oops, that symbol. That to list, okay. Now, now you have SP 500 symbols. We get it here. So now let's do uh, let's do something like let's do the Russell 1000. Um, so Russell 1000 is um, uh, 1000. Um, uh, does this one have it? Yeah. See, it has the symbols here with ticker. So Russell 1000, you do um, Russ. Oh, so, oops, Russell equals um, PD that read HTML. Oops, and then let's look which one it corresponds to. Russell, let's do zero. Nope, two maybe. Uh, uh two. So two will be the Russell, and then Russell that ticker that two list is uh, is uh, going to be the Russell 
cell symbols. Oh, oops. Oops. Okay. And then let's combine them. We'll do like a, a combine all uh, ticker symbols. We'll do a, a, a symbol list equals. We'll make a, um, a set to remove duplicates and then we'll make it a list again. So do something like this. Oh, I can't type today. List um, NASDAQ under symbols that um, like uh, this plus uh, uh, SP500 symbols plus Russell symbols. Uh, I spelled symbols wrong. Okay, and first we'll make it a set and then a list like this. Great. And now um, download uh, data from Yahoo Finance. This is the magic part. Yahoo Finance actually makes it really easy if, if you're using daily data. So you have to do like import uh, Y Finance as YF. Um, oops, Y Finance as YF. Um, okay, and then you do something like uh, like this. You do um, the data equals Y equals yf uh, dot uh, download symbol list and you give it a start and end uh, again if you want to do ml you have to be careful with things like recency bias survivorship bias I, I should say and things like that um, that will bias your model if you just use these types of symbols uh, and we can make more videos on that um, another time but let's just do this interval equals uh, one day um, and there's another thing called like auto adjust I think uh, auto adjust let's make it false this gives us more information it gives us like dividend information and uh, non adjust it, it, the adjusted close separately and we'll make another video on adjusted close and that sort of thing so first thing you run this thing uh, and it gives you amazingly the data for I guess there's 1017 um, unique indices so obviously these the Russell 1000 contains most of the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 so there's not much extra but anyways let me show you guys um, once once this is complete um, you're gonna get a data in a flat format you're gonna get like um, the days as the index and then you're gonna get um, the symbols but um, let me show you how to make it in a nice uh, other format if you want and while this is running uh, we'll wait a bit da, 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 da. sorry I thought it was faster than this but it's still pretty fast look 58% I'm gonna show you guys a cool trick to make your data frame look look cool uh. 70 for about 80 percent yay and this uh, adjust, auto adjust equals false um, allows you to um, get like a thing that Yahoo Finance computes called the um, the adjusted close and that's like uh, adjusted for dividends and I'll show you guys how they do that in another video so now we got this data yay so it's this ugly format where it's like you have uh, the columns being like a multi-index. You have like adjusted close. You have a, uh, a, a the symbols and then you have the volume. So like maybe maybe it's easier to like actually make this like a, sort of a a tall format. So you can do that by doing something like um, you can do something like stack. I think stack level equals one and uh, level equals one means you want to stack the second thing in the columns and as you see now it's like more nice um, so yeah that's probably what we want to do does this have it in place no so let's 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 make it cleaner so we can save it okay so let's do uh, df I don't want to like lose the file so df uh, and then let's rename the index I guess uh, uh, index.name 
let's uh, call the first one date. The second one, let's call um, symbol. And um, oh, uh, the names. Sorry, names. Um, and now uh, let's. Uh, we can also swap the symbol. Some people like to have the um, the the index as the out, outer thing, so we can do swap level like that. And if you want to save it as a CSV, you can do that to CSV um, DF uh, 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 DF daily. Uh, um, 1017 symbols dot CSV. This can work. You can also say the issue with saving the original one to the CSV is it gives you like an ugly format. So let me just show you guys. Just if you were to like, so this format is nice. Um, I can just do like uh, I can reread it. I can do pd dot read CSV, and then I can do this. Oh, oops. And it, it looks pretty legit, right? And you can do the index calls and all that stuff. But what's uh, I can I can, just to show you guys for a second, I guess I can do index call equals zero one, um, and then parse dates equals date something like that, and then you get a nice format. But if I were to try to save this, I could tr do the data dot two csv, um, uh, the, the data dot csv just to show you guys. That this is going to be really ugly when I reread it. Like, I'm talking the original formatted data. Uh, oops. So, uh, data, remember, looked like this. So now if I do pd.readcsv, data.csv, I get, oh, I get like this really ugly format um, uh, because uh, it's a multi index. So if you were to want to save this as a CSV, you would really want to do something like data.index. Right now, oh, sorry, that data dot columns. Right now, it's a multi index. You want something like this. You want something like uh, data dot columns equals a plus uh, plus b for a b in data dot columns. This work. Oops. Uh, so now you have um, no more multi index. You have a single index um, like this. Uh, with the little underscore between them. So now if you do data dot to CSV, uh, data dot CSV, and then you do PD dot read CSV, data dot CSV, uh, you get a, a decent format. You get like things on top of other. I prefer this format, um, but I just wanted to show you this format. So this format, you, did the, you do the stack thing. Level equals one. Uh, you can name it. Uh, you can swap levels if you want, and then you can save the CSV. But look at how cool it is. It's just a one-liner with the symbolist uh, start and end date to get all the data. I thought that was really cool. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, or leave a comment. Um, thank you.